everybody and welcome to Teach Me Tuesdays. I'm your host, B-Dub, and with me is Ursi. Hello, Ursi. How are you? Hello. I'm excited. I don't have to be the host. This is like... Yeah, I know. It's like this a is... vacation. I'm excited. <laughs> this feels very strange and uh, I don't know. It's kind of fun, though. Uh, so this episode is brought to you by Unicorn and Pugna, but we'll hear a little bit about them later on in the show. That we will. So... Yeah, I'm excited. So, oh God, this is this is actually <laughs> so fun. I'm not like since the fourth sphere transition, I've literally not been on a show that I've not been the host of, and this is this is like yeah. a whole new world. Yeah, that's like I kind of it's it's kind of fun, but I feel like you know there's a lot of pressure now. You know, like nah. if this is ter- if this episode's terrible, it's all my fault. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, one of those things where it just it just you know you figure it out. You know, it's like getting yeah. thrown into a pool, except like. Uh, you know, some very some number of people are watching you as you sink or swim. I always <laughs> yeah, get to be exactly. worried. People are always asking us like what yeah. our numbers are, and we when we say like, oh, you know, most podcasts don't public, publicly discuss numbers. So now I'm like, I can't even use like an an analogous number. I can't even use like a figure of speech to be like, oh man, you know, it's like getting thrown into a pool and a couple thousand people watching or a couple hundred people watching because <laughs> then that'll give people hints. Yeah. And then you're worried. And you, you can say like a couple yeah, you million. Can't do that. And everybody knows that's not true. So maybe that's <laughs> got to keep yeah. people guessing. <laughs> no one has any clue yeah. how big the podcast is or how small it is. Maybe it's like two dozen yeah. people are watching. Who knows? Who knows? No one knows. We barely know, honestly. So, <laughs> so, um, how's how's Dota been treating you? Oh. Um, we won't talk about this too much because I know we'll, we'll, you'll talk about it probably in more length on Thursday, but. Oh, no. Uh, let uh, God. Well, I mean, actually, we spoke about it in the Patreon episode. <laughs> and, uh, My, well, I played a game today. Has it gotten any better since then? No, yeah, no. Did you, oh, I, no. Actually, okay, so for reference, I'm on a disgusting losing streak in my, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. My last 11 games, I've only won two of them. Um yeah, and a lot that's of those. Painful. Yeah, a lot of those were like four games in a row that I just sat down and played and lost all of them. Also, it wasn't like a game here and a game there. It was like painful. Like I literally sat down and just lost seventy five MMR all at once in like the space of like an hour and a half, and like none of the games were even close. So my my enthusiasm for Dota is not exactly at a high point. I think we should say <laughs> I'm kind of. Uh, my current my current Steam name is Dota 2 Game Winner because that <laughs> I feel like if I put positive energy out into the Dota universe, I'm going to get it back. And I, yeah. I did break my losing streak yesterday. I won an Ancient Apparition game. Well, hey, Thank God. That's good. Um, I built a Bloodstone in that game, which was quite fun. Okay, uh, interesting. I didn't finish it until the end, but I was building it anyway. Because I wanted to regen, and I was like, I already yeah. have an Aghanim Scepter, uh, I'm just going to do whatever the hell, heck I want. <laughs> um, well, it must have worked, because you won, right? Yeah, it was uh, it was a good game. I I think I, I played quite well. My AA is getting quite good. Also, he's bugged. I'm pretty sure they still have not fixed that bug. Um, oh, really? That his... Yeah, his... Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's still bugged that his ultimate... His ultimate has a level twenty five, um, level twenty five talent that adds four percent to the ice blast kill threshold. So instead of being ten, eleven, or twelve percent, is fourteen, fifteen, sixteen percent. That's supposed to be his twenty five okay. talent, but I've heard that that is always applicable, and I know for sure it was like that. Like I want to say a week ago, but I don't know if they fixed it. and I just mixed missed that patch, that bug fix. Anyway, I like AA a lot right now, especially because I see Morphling constantly. And yeah, um, actually, funnel, he's tricky. Funnily, my like I say, in my last eleven games, I only have two wins. Both of those are Ancient Apparition games, and well, actually, one of them didn't count because it was an eleven-minute game where we just got intentionally fed. So actually, in my last ten oh. games, I've only won one. That's more accurate. Um, but yeah, I brought I broke my losing streak by winning that game. And that felt good. Well, that's good. And then I lost the yeah. game today in 17 minutes. So you can tell how much fun uh, that was. I did get to leave yeah, it, though. Yeah, that sounds... But I didn't get to... I mean, at least it was short. <laughs> yes, yeah, or right? Invoker abandoned after losing mid really hard to an OD. Oh, um, oh no. 
Yeah, it's rough. It's rough. It's yeah. uh, it's real sad times. Now, luckily, most of these um, losses are in unranked, except for the three that were in ranked, or no, the the five that were in ranked. I don't know at this point. Have you, <laughs> have you played the uh, the Frost of Us mini game thing? No, I have the somewhat. Um, What's the word for people? I have the curmudgeonly opinion that I just if I'm if I load into the Dota client. That's a good word. Yeah, I like that. I I if I load into the Dota client, it's to play Dota. I don't load into the Dota client and say I want to play a custom game or I want to play Turbo Mode. Like if I want to not play Dota, I'll just go play not Dota. Like I'll open the Division or I'll go <laughs> get load up a JRPG or I'll watch TV or I'll do something. I am not ever loading to the Dota client and clicking on the arcade tab so yeah. i've not touched frost of us i again i'm just a curmudgeon like i've accepted it eventually maybe like by the end of the month i'll get my three wins for a free treasure but yeah at, at this <laughs> yeah. rate at this rate it's gonna take a while <laughs> it's gonna take 30 games or whatever i i got mine today actually i played two turbo games today and won one yesterday i didn't know turbo counted but it does oh so. wow um so yeah you could just maybe turbo them i don't know <laughs> no i, I also <laughs> but, refuse turbo but also like yeah you just said like if if you're not playing an actual game of dota then it's not happening yeah i understand like i understand who turbo is for and i'm glad that it exists but i am not the target audience for turbo mm -hmm. like the advertisement for turbo is it's like dota except it's not serious and i don't play yeah. dota to not be serious like dota is a serious game if i want to not be serious i'll play in like five stacks but yeah i like turbo just feels wrong to me again like why would i play turbo when i'll just go play the division like Dota is a yeah. game that's meant to be taken seriously i used it today as like a warm-up because i felt like i was a bit too kind of rusty yeah. just to jump straight into one i get the but fingers with nimble actually yeah kind of yeah so i just played like two quick and they were really quick right i think it was like i don't know 20 minutes each maybe but yeah my regular um, games are like that recently i haven't had a, oh. i haven't had a game <laughs> let's see yeah in my last 11 games i've not had a game go over 40 minutes that's actually ridiculous i'm looking oh, really? at this now i can't believe that's true wow oh my god this has just been so, it's just been so bad and I, complaining is not fun to listen to, so I'll stop now. But man, no. okay. I don't like Dota. Uh -huh. Actually, that's um, that's one thing. Uh, that wasn't a question I was planning to ask. But do you warm up before playing a game, or do you just go straight in? Always, I always play an unranked warm up game. I okay. I maybe like once or twice in my life I've opened client and just immediately gone to ranked. But that is those. Those instances are few and far between. I always try, try to play a warm-up game, and if I don't play well in the warm-up game, then I don't play ranked. I just keep playing unranked. Oh, I see. Okay. Like, even before going into unranked, do you load up, like, um, you know, when you, like, demo heroes and stuff, just to... Yeah. No, I don't do that. Do you ever do that? No. Unranked, much so, like I said, I always take Dota seriously. I always play unranked seriously, but yeah, I... I'm not that worried about it. If if there's something I want to test, I'll open up demo mode just conveniently, just because I'm going to do it anyway. But I don't actively mm -hmm. think, oh man, I'm about to play unranked. I better warm up and play unranked. I mean, and play in demo mode. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean, some people do that. Like Proud right. used to, uh, and he's probably a lot better for it. And I probably should have been doing this, but he used to when we were in queue. He would, especially for Theorycraft Thursday games, actually, when we were in queue, he would load up the custom game that's like the last hit trainer. And like if we were doing a theater oh, craft yeah. Thursday on like a drow, he would load up drow mm -hmm. and just do like five minutes of last hitting while we waited in queue. And that probably like that's something that I should have been doing, but I was like, now nah, I'm just gonna like read through Twitter for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's something I always do too. But I probably should be doing the last hitting practice as well. Seeing especially as like my last hitting isn't that great. It's definitely gotten better uh, as time has gone on, but it's still something I struggle with. But there's nothing really you can do about that unless apart from practicing, right? I mean, there's no like nifty tricks that i'm like missing yeah so. well like there are some tricks but you probably know them already there's no like second level tricks i guess which is a really weird way to word it like there's the the initial trick of like you wait for the tower to hit it five times and then you hit it once yeah and then if you deal 
See now, Proud knows the exact damages. I just eyeball everything, which makes me a terrible teacher when it comes to these kind of things. But um, mm-hmm. I Proud knows the exact damages. Like if you do, if you do less than fifty damage, you need to hit it twice after the towers hit it five times, or after the towers hit a range creep twice. If you deal more than seventy, you hit it once and you'll kill it most of the time. I think you need seventy-five to be assured, because it depends on oh, damage ranges. Yeah, because like. Like, I don't know, this is probably not true, but just an example. If Slark has an 8 eight damage range and you have 74 damage, that means that your damage could be 70 or it could be 78, but it averages to 74. Yeah. So while in an actual game that is not super relevant, like in a team fight or whatever, in last hitting in the early game, that is actually quite relevant. That's why CK is so hard to last hit with under tower. Because you don't know mm-hmm. if you're going to hit for 40 damage or for 70 damage. Because he has like a 36 point range or something. Because that hero is a oh. meme. Um, <laughs> so those are like the, the little tricks. Is like, you know, five tower hits and then one melee hit. Or if you would do really low damage. Like if you're like a crystal maiden, then it's five tower hits and two melee hits. Um, and then there's other like little things. Like, oh, if it's a catapult... You do three tower hits, and then you hit it once if you have creeps hitting it, or you hit it twice if you're the only one hitting it. Or if you deal, like, I think you have to deal, like, 80, 85 damage, I want to say. Then if you deal that much damage, then you can wait for the three hits and then hit it once. There's all Mm -hmm. these, like, little things like that, but pretty much everybody knows those, I want to say. Like, everybody knows, like, you wait five tower hits, you wait four tower hits, you wait two tower hits, whatever. So, yeah, once you've, like, gotten those, which will help you incrementally, then it's just like, all right, you're off on your own figure it out and you just have to like suffer through missing less hits for like a few thousand games mm-hmm. it's hard like again like you said yeah. there's no there's no trick to it it's just kind of one of those things no. that like it's like learning a language right like everybody wants to know the quick tip like the the quick trick to like oh how do you memorize vocab words in french it's like well you know you get flashcards and you sit there in the dark for like four hours and then you just fl- <laughs> flip them over and over again and you learn how to say fish and it's like, all right, that's how I learned yeah. how to say fish. There's no like trick that's like, oh yeah, I slept with it with like a vocab book under my pillow, and now suddenly I know all all. <laughs> it French. just absorbs into your brain. Yeah, right. That's like yeah, <laughs> that's like people used to say like, oh, if you um, one of the study study tips people would say like in high school, like people would be like, oh, you know, what you got to do is you got to record all the vocab on like an MP3 player, and then you put it in your headphones at night or you play it like on oh, the speakers yeah. and then while you're sleeping like your mind subconsciously is registering these words it's like that's not true like that does, that's not how no. that works but it is like otherwise everyone would just do it for everything yeah. right like it's not that's not yeah. true and there are some merits have, like, you ever, have you ever tried that by the way have you did you ever do that no but i will say there are in like in the way psychology or i shouldn't say psychology I'm going to use the word, wrong, wrong word here, but we'll live with it. You know, like brain chemistry and the way that learning works, you actually learn very well before you go to sleep. Um, so it actually does have some good effects if you're trying to learn something to play it while you're going to sleep because obviously when you're sleeping, it does nothing. But while you're like in that Zen state in bed trying to go to sleep, if you're a person like me that takes mm-hmm. like – I take like 20 minutes to go to, to fall asleep at night. If I have yeah. like something playing behind me or in headphones, if you're able to sleep with headphones in, like some people are, I can't, then you're kind of – while your brain is relaxing and you're being fed that information, you learn that information well compared to if you – if you, it's more effective than if you were just doing that, like in the middle of the day. Because in the middle of the day, you're distracted okay. by other things. So basically, I should get someone to record what all of the, uh, how many hits underneath tower or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is, and then have that just playing over and over again yeah. as I'm falling asleep, or, or, and then I'll become a better last hitter, right? That's yeah. what you're saying. Or just like the base damage <laughs> of heroes, like oh yeah, he's like drow forty two. Monkey King, 54. <laughs> I actually thought about doing that because uh, I've been, not with Dota, but I've been learning Korean just for fun, which means I've been oh, yeah. very slowly learning Korean compared to somebody that yeah. like is actively learning it. And I was thinking about just recording myself saying like like a noun and then the translation instead of having flashcards just so I could like play that mm-hmm. in like if I was doing chores or something and it would just like read. Yeah the english or i would read the english and i would read the korean translation but of course i didn't do that because like who has the time for that like that seems like a lot of work and again like 
I'm doing yeah. this for fun compared to yeah. really focusing. But you yeah, could do true. that. Like some people, that's a really productive way to learn things and like memorize. Like, and again, mm. it's Dota, so it's a you know maybe you don't have to take it super seriously, but. Like, I make flashcards and never use them because I find the process of making flashcards a very educational experience. Like, writing notes oh, teaches so, me. Like, yeah. Whereas some people, they, you know, this is going to sound super simplistic, but, you know, my my few years of of learning to become a teacher have, have given me a few tips and tricks. And the big t- trick is that identify how you learn best and use that in all your pursuits. So if you are the type of person like me that learns by writing, then if you are trying to get better at Dota, sure, you're not being tested on it, but you still Mm -hmm. learn the same ways mentally. So whether I'm taking a history test and I'm going to be writing down a timeline so that I can memorize that timeline, I could do the same thing with Dota and say, all right, I need to learn Slardar's base, base armor. And if I write note cards and say, all right, Slardar, base armor, four. Doom, base armor, one. Tiny, base armor, zero. Like, that process of writing will make me memorize those things compared to me just entering into games and just being like, oh, you know, I should have known this and I didn't. So if you're the type of person that learns by, like, listening, just record yourself doing that or whatever. Like, that's what casters do. Whenever new patches comes out, they make flashcards. I shouldn't say all casters, but some casters. Like Android. Android? Android? I'm pretty sure it's Android. Android, yeah. Okay, good. I've heard it both ways, and every and people correct it both ways. They're like, "Oh, you said Android. It's any droid," and then they say, "Oh, you said any droid." It's Android. And, see, that's what I always everyone thought. Everyone thinks it's any droid, but yeah. it's not. It's Android. I think I'm, I am like ninety percent certain that's Android. I've also like we we met. Well, I don't know if you were there, but you well, know, you definitely were there. Like we met her at yeah, TI. I like hung out with her. Yeah, I'm, like I'm ninety nine yeah, yeah. percent sure it's Android. Anyway, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is too. But now I'm like yeah, doubting myself, yourself. and now I'm like, wait. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember when 7.0 came out. She made like this incredibly impressive flashcard set with all the talent trees, and I was like, that's the coolest thing. Like that gets my Amazing. like educator gears going. Like that's so cool. Yeah, like I love flashcards. Even though, again, I don't really use them. I just make them, and then I'm like, all right, I learn through the process of writing over and over again these little things. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. If you want to learn Dota okay. by like reciting into a microphone the base stats of every hero and then listening to that at night, go for it, dude. Like, whatever works for you is is perfect. <laughs> Actually, that's not, like that's one thing that I've just thought about. Like, how well do you know like all of like you know the base stats of heroes and stuff? Like, oh god, I'm gonna embarrass myself. You... I I know. I would say like, I ballpark know all of them. Okay. But I I could not give you specific stats on basically anybody. Okay. Like right. especially for stats. Like, like I know like like Spirit Breaker has and again they've changed these through the years. I'm pretty sure Spirit Breaker has the most strength at level 1. And mm-hmm. okay. That is a fact that I know or at least that was true for a very long time or at least he's in the top 3. Treant Protector, I think they gave him a strength buff at level 1. Anyway, mm. I could tell you that Spirit Breaker is the highest strength hero at level one, but that doesn't necessarily like I. But I couldn't tell you like, oh, he has thirty eight. Like, I let's see. see. Okay, yeah. And if he has thirty eight, I'm gonna be so over the moon with myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just yeah. kind of curious, just because like I don't. I mean, like as like bad as this is, oh, I feel 29. like I don't know anything about any of the heroes like off by heart at all um i mean obviously like i know what they do but like in terms of like actually numbers and stuff no clue i no idea i subscribe to the educational methodology that there is very little point in learning something that is easily accessible information so for example there's no no purpose in me memorizing the times tables past past 10 because I can just Google 12 times 12, which I think is 144, right? But yeah. anyway, I don't like, or no, it's one, I don't know. I don't, this is not a math podcast. But there's no point in me memorizing that because I can just as easily go pull my phone out of my pocket and look at it and do it. Unless, you know, unless you're you're an accountant or whatever. But um, similarly in Dota, I'm not going to spend hours combing through stats to be like, oh, you know, Spirit Breaker has 3.1 strength gain. Because as long as I know he has high strength gain, I can know, like, all right, he is probably around three. I don't need mm-hmm. to, like, stress myself out, like, looking and, like, okay. agonizing 
Uh, the only important thing that people need to memorize stat wise is base base uh, base attack damage of mid laners. That's really the only thing that I worry myself okay. about. Everything else, you go ballpark. How? But if you're a mid player, you need to memorize every mid hero's base damage. How? Why is that mid exclusive? How come that doesn't apply over kind of all lanes or whatever lane you're in? Mid. So again, like it's useful information to know always, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. more relevant to certain heroes than others, right? So like it's pretty pointless to know a lot of a lot of um, of supports base damage because it's not very relevant. As long as you know mm, ballpark, like CM does very little and Shadow Shaman does a lot. You don't need to know. You don't need to memorize. Oh, she does thirty six and he does seventy two. But with mid laners, since it is a quote unquote one v one mechanical intensive matchup, you need to know. All right, I'm playing Shadow Fiend. I have thirty six base damage. After I have a Wraith Band, I'm gonna have forty three, which then means I'm going to be at a nine point disadvantage against this this. Uh, ta or okay just that you know because again like it's so mechanically intensive you need to be able to gauge all right this person is going to have an advantage on me therefore i need to get a second null talisman early like if i'm playing shadow mm -hmm. fiend and i'm in a matchup where i'm super disadvantaged instead of getting boots early i'm probably gonna finish my aki and a wand because i just want to have more stats to have more damage because I'm not too worried about getting boots to get kills. I'm worried about getting four more, four more, uh, four more agility from like uh, finishing my wraith band or finishing my uh, my aki and getting eight, and getting nine more damage. Like those little things matter a lot more in mid matchups. Whereas in the safe lane, you're basically playing against yourself in a lot of in a mm -hmm. lot of times, unless you're getting arrowed. I suppose it's not as mechanically intensive. It's not that one v one focus. So yeah. And again, you again you don't need to be hyper specific. Like you don't need to know exactly thirty six damage or whatever. But you want to know like, yeah. hey, I have very low base damage on this hero, and I'm against a Marana, and her attack animation is fast, and she does good damage. Like stuff like that is very very useful information or necessary information. I'd say not just useful. Like if you want to be a mid player, you need to study that stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's useful info. Um. Okay, so I would like to talk a little bit about roaming. Okay. Um, do you roam often? Are you kind of do you play roaming? I a lot. No, I I so <laughs> excuse me. So I play a few roaming heroes often, but okay. I so Kunkka is my main roaming hero. Like if I'm play if I'm roaming, oh, I'm playing Kunkka or Elder Titan. But okay. Ella Kunkka, I'm definitely playing more often. Elder Titan was like, I had a fling with Elder Titan a few weeks ago, and it was fun. Yeah, you were all about that Elder Titan. Yeah, my in Dota, my uh, my what's it called? My display profile is just three pictures of Elder Titan. Um, <laughs> and I'll do that occasionally. But Kunkka is my main roamer. I don't. I would. I'm not a roaming player um, in large part because I dislike a lot of the other heroes that are not Kunkka. Mm -hmm. And Kunkka is not yeah. always a good hero. Like, if they're running a mid-puck and I play Kunkka, like, I'm just asking to lose a game of Dota 2. Right. So, okay. uh, so the right pick there would be, like, Night Stalker. But I don't play Night Stalker, and I don't want to play Night Stalker. So I'm not going to roam that game. And, um, mm. yeah. Roamers, some people have that, like, roaming mentality, or that, like, a roamers... Um, what's it called romer's personality and that's just not me yeah. I, i'm not good at diving okay that's one of my weaknesses and i suck yeah. at spirit breaker and spirit breaker is always the right okay. choice if you're playing four yeah i was gonna say like i i could i seem to be okay on like spirit breakers i probably have like a i think it's about 60 65 percent win rate with spirit breaker oh, wow. i would say ish um wait, have, let me oh, look wow. that up i don't want to say that and then be like i i, I, I it's funny you say because <laughs> i just no. looked at my stats I, I just said I was terrible at Spirit Breaker. I have a 75% win rate on this hero, actually. Oh, But what? I hate him still. I have uh, 12 games, 9 wins, 3 losses, which is not a lot of games considering I have, like, 4,000 games or whatever, <laughs> 5,000 games. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't feel like I'm good at Spirit Breaker. I feel like Spirit Breaker is just so good that he carries me to victories that I don't deserve. <laughs> yeah, so... I have a 65% win rate on Spirit Breaker. And, like, I seem to, like... I'm, I'm all right with him, do you know what I mean? Like... I kind of know the way he works and it it really helps. I, I feel like I'm really helping out my team. Yeah. Whereas like 
other romas that I play, I feel like I do nothing. And if we win, it's just by chance. It's not down to me at all. Like, I can't get kills in lane. I wander around not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I just... I just don't know how to do it pretty so, much. Like, because I know, like, my goal, my goals are to kind of get kills, get ganks, and like instill fear in my enemies if I'm not on the map, right? Yes, that's pretty much what I'm trying to do. But like, I don't know how to do that if I don't have like a stun, essentially, or like, because like, I mean, I would say the three roamers I'm playing mostly is Ricky, Bounty Hunter, and Nyx Assassin. Okay, and. Like Nyx, yeah, he has a stun, but it's it's sometimes kind of difficult to land. Like I'm one of those people who will <laughs> miss it yeah. occasionally. Especially if you overthink um, it. Yeah, yeah. But um like it's it always seems to be that like we'll nearly get the kill and then oh now they're behind tower and yeah. I don't want well, like you said, like you're not very good at diving. I don't think I mean, I'm not very good at diving, evidently, because I don't seem to get the kills. And then I'm kind of low leveled and be kind of like a waste of space, you know? Yeah. So I actually think, so you're describing basically what I would say is the simplest and most key issue that people playing roamers run into. And it's very dependent on hero choice. And a lot of people, so four, aka roamers, are grouped together, but they are very distinct from one another. Within the category of yeah. roamers, I would say there's two subcategories, maybe three. Okay. I'm sure I'm going to add subcategories as I go on in this in, sure. the, in this explanation. But let's start okay. with two. So there are roamers like Spirit Breaker that force issues, and a Spirit Breaker jumps in. You your mid laner, like let's let's just say you're ganking mid for all of these examples. Mm-hmm. If you are playing Spirit Breaker, your mid laner knows you're coming because it's very obvious, and they know you've committed fully to doing something. And yeah, sure, you can yeah. stop your charge, but in general, they know, like, hey, something is about to happen. Mm-hmm. By doing this action, you are forcing an issue and you are forcing something to happen. Similarly, if you're like a Night Stalker at nighttime, if you rotate somewhere, yeah. Your mid laner knows, like, hey, it's go time. Like, my Night Stalker is here. Mm-hmm. He just flew over a cliff using Stalker of the Night. He silenced the enemy quap, and then he used a void. I have to yeah. jam on this person. Otherwise, like, this is a wasted effort. But then there are more passive roamers that are a bit more um, intricate and annoying, like, more, more like a nuisance, that do not force issues. But they're good when issues are forced by other heroes. So, like, Bounty Hunter mm-hmm. is excellent if your mid laner forces an issue, or for that matter, if the enemy mid laner or the enemy roamer forces an issue on your mid laner. Bounty Hunter is great to just pop in and just be like, hey, I mini stunned your Spirit Breaker, so his charge stopped, and then I slowed your Quap, and she doesn't have boots yet, but my mid laner has boots, so he got away, and then he salved up, and then yeah. he came back, and then he double raised her, and now she's dead. Like, that's a great thing, whereas a Spirit Breaker in that situation would not be able to pop in from behind because he's not an invisible hero, it turns out. Mm-hmm. Um, so these these uh, these issue creators are very distinct from the heroes that do not create issues. They solve issues or they react to issues, like Ricky and like Bounty Hunter um, and like Elder Titan. Elder Titan, if the enemy okay. hero is fast, is not going to force an issue because they're just going to run away from Stomp. But if they if they mm-hmm. like aggressively move on your mid laner and then you catch them offhand and stomp them, you're amazing. Like you're you're gonna win that team fight and you're gonna be a god. But they're two yeah. very distinct heroes. So people kind of mess up. They they confuse the two. They conflate the two is the proper word. Mm. Um, because they're really not the same. Even though they're all roamers, they're very distinct kinds of roamers. And it's important to play them differently because they are they excel at different things. Yeah, that's very true, actually. Like, I've never thought about them being... But there are all those, like, two distinct kind of groups. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay. Some are a little bit in the middle ground, but that kind of messes my whole metaphor up, so I'm not going to talk about those. <laughs> okay. Like, Kunkka's in the middle ground. <laughs> like, Kunkka is... Wind, he seems like someone who does something, though, like, because he can jump in and do the X marks the spot thing, and is he not, like, a kind of... Um, Does he not fall into the kind of spirit breaker type? In in the mid game and late game, he is a lot like a spirit breaker where he forces an issue because he gets a long yeah. range X mark. But in the early game, he is very much a like either you need to have a really good torrent, which does like no damage because they nerfed it like 16 times in a row. You mm. either need to have a really good torrent and then fo- that creates an issue with which your mid laner follows up. 
or okay. you need to have your mid laner like set up. Like let's say your mid laner is an OD. The OD banishes somebody, then your Kunkka is able to run in, get the perfect torrent, and then X mark them as well. But mm. because his X mark is so low range early game, he cannot create issues. Whereas in the mid game and late game, when he has max level X mark, he can create issues because X mark is such a strong ability that he can get it. The only okay. the only Kunkka like that is low level that is a issue creator is a Kunkka with a haste or an invis, basically. Mm. Okay. All right. Or like a smoke. So. So let's say like I'm playing I am roaming and you know I'm playing fine everything's going okay like I'm not doing badly but I'm also not doing a lot like would you say just like give up and go into a lane or is that I guess that's kind of ruining someone else's lane though like what do you do in that situation like if you're kind of roaming around you're not getting kills do you just keep trying or and also how long should you like cuz I know Getting the enemy courier is, like, great, but how long do you wait and waste time to try and kill it before you go, this is not worth it? And is it worth it to waste all that time? Um, I realize that was probably, like, a billion questions all at once, and I should have separated well, those out rather than just well, bombarding you with Let's do the simplest one first. Okay. <laughs> let's do the simplest one first. So the simplest one is how to, like, when do you give up on sniping courier? Yes. Sniping courier, the easiest way to do it is through mid lane, because mid lane mm-hmm. has easy paths for, for both teams. It has easy paths yeah. to snipe the courier, and also mid lane has the most kind of linear item progression that everybody knows. So, or, you know, more or less knows. So Mm -hmm. in mid lane, you know, all right, this is a bottle mid. He or she is going to get, I should say they, Proud is going to message me after this. They are going to get their (laughs) bottle at, you know, let's say two and a half minutes. You can assess how good they're last hitting or how well they're last hitting or how poorly they're last hitting and say, all right, they're having a really hard time. So they're not going to have a bottle until like 245 or three minutes. And then you say, all right, I can roam for the first minute and a half. I can go wherever I want. And then I'm going to come back to mid around 215. And I actually, even when I'm playing five, I snipe couriers. What I like to do is I like to place a ward in between the tier two and the tier one in the spot that obviously does not have true sight. And Mm -hmm. then I find it easier to snipe couriers after they have given the item to the hero okay. if i'm not on a hero like bounty hunter or like spirit breaker that is going to one shot the courier if i'm a hero like uh, i played a rubik game and i sniped a courier and rubik does not oh, one shot nice. a courier but no. if it's on the way back i can hit it twice or if it's on the way there i can hit it twice because i'm ranged but basically if you're a little worried about your ability to hit the courier especially if it's like especially if you don't make it there in time if you're trying to do other things like let's say you try to go get bounty runes Mm -hmm. then um, you get it on the way back. Ideally, you get it there, just so they don't get their item. But anyway, the point is, I never try to snipe curves after three minutes unless I know for sure it's going somewhere or coming back from somewhere, and I happen to be in the area. I generally don't bother. Like, it's handy, sure, but I'm not going to stress over hunting a courier that I have no clue where it is in a pub. Okay. Because you just don't know. Like, at a certain point, you know, if it's past three minutes, like unless unless the enemy, like let's say uh, let's say the mid that we're talking about earlier did not get their bottle and it's still three minutes, and you're playing bounty hunter and you have an orb of venom, you know you can still snipe that courier because you have Shikuchi and you have the damage from Invis if it comes by. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if I'm playing Rubik, I'm not going to bother because there's absolutely no way I as a Rubik am going to get that courier anymore. Yeah. So you just have to assess: can I still kill this courier while it's flying? And has the middle laner not used it? If you've already missed it on one trip, then that second trip you have no, no clue when it's going to come. Because the first trip mm-hmm. is always the very clearly cut one. Also, it used to be easier because people always got a salve at level one. But nowadays people aren't doing that anymore because mid laners just don't need it as much. I guess. I don't, okay. I don't know why some people don't do that, I'll be honest. Like, the salve at, mm. at early is still really good and I like it a lot. But for some reason people don't do it as much anymore. Anyway, yeah, just uh, try to do it before three minutes, and if you don't get it at three okay. minutes, then just do it if you have the opportunity. Don't but don't, yeah, yeah, don't don't stress about it. It's sure it's flashy mm-hmm. and cool, but you know you're <laughs> you're trying to win a game. You're not trying to be flashy and cool. If you can yes. do both, that's good. But you really only need to do the winning. You don't need to look flashy and cool. You just need to get that plus twenty five. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Okay. So um, I think another question that I kind of threw out there in that kind of Hard you know, just stream, stream, stream of questions was like, if like ganking isn't really working, should I just go to a lane and try and get XP or do, do you just keep on trying? Like if it's just not happening, what would you recommend? There... I mean, I guess it's very game, like, yeah, it depends case to case. Um, there, there, so I guess the way I would best assess it without obviously having the game specific stuff Right. Is that if you if you have the potential to gank and you are playing an issue creator, if one of your mm -hmm. lanes is already winning, it's very easy to set a set up a kill there. Like, yeah. uh, okay, let's say my mid SF is really dominating an enemy Death Knight or Death Knight Dragon Knight, but <laughs> cannot actually seal the deal and kill that person. If I as an ogre magi, sure, I've not been able to kill earlier. But if I pop over and have one stun, that means my SF gets a triple raise combo and gets a kill. My mm -hmm. relatively simple contribution netted an entire kill because my yeah. mid laner was already winning his matchup. That is a time where even if my ganks were not working earlier, it's going to work now. That's one time where I would go and gank even if it had not worked out earlier. Um, if my mid lane SF was also losing, then I might go bother a hero if I can bother that hero. There is something to be said... Um, there's something he said for early harass that does not contribute to kills. So okay. probably the best example would be an Ogre Magi will get Ignite. No, what, I need to look this up. Uh, I always miss his names. Uh, yeah, Ignite. So he'll get Ignite at level 1 and just toss them at an enemy mid laner just mm -hmm. to bother them so that his mid laner can relax and win the first wave, even if they like lose out on some XP because they have two heroes there. Right. Similarly, um, like they, like they're not going for that kill, right? Similarly, like um, if an elder titan just walks over and just slaps a guy a bunch of times, like they're not going for a kill, but he's hurting that mid laner's ability to play the lane. Mm -hmm. So there's something to be said for maybe your roaming is not super effective in a kill sense, but it can be very effective in a sense of still getting things done. And sometimes, okay, forcing a lost lane for an opponent is even more important than um than getting kills because kills aren't that important yeah. in the early game other than first blood but um mm, true. yeah the other thing is a lot of times if like your mid lane is like a null state like you just have no impact in mid lane you're just gonna waste your time you could always make stacks in the jungle that's an easy one if you have stack takers on your team alternatively you can also just go to the safe lane and get kills or maybe push the tower like again let's say you're playing roaming ogre just bloodlust your terror blade and let's take the tower force an issue um let's say your mm. mid laner is a doom maybe you can play more aggressively or you're a beastmaster you can play more aggressively so it's all about finding where you have potential to do things and going and getting them done or at least being in the position to help if something is forced okay and make stacks of nothing right. else even the most useless level one hero can make stacks like you know if you have a, okay. if you have, yeah, yeah. True. if you're just terribly useless, like if you've gotten completely <laughs> neutered, then just make make some stacks and and then right. like sit around while they're taken and be like, hey, I need XP, and then and then grab the tome, hopefully. Also, grab bounty runes. That's another big one. Like, mm. you could just you can get so high level just off of getting bounty runes, even if you do absolutely just, nothing else. Just like roam around, just stealing their runes all the time. Yeah, and like you stealing things from the enemy team. And maybe from your own team. And then you're also getting stuff for yourself that is necessary. Like, everybody needs XP, but people get it in different ways. Some heroes get it by killing, some heroes get it by laning, some get it by pulling, and some get it by bounty runes in, in a bad case. So yeah, find something you can do and achieve it, I think is the, is the crux okay. of it. Also, it's like something, when you were talking about, um, like, making stacks, something I realized that I've been doing... Uh, like something I realized this week that I was doing was, um, you know, when they changed the jungle camps to spawn every even minute. Yes, <clears throat> that terrible. And then they terrible changed time. it back. Yes, they changed it back. And then they changed it back. Well, like even though I knew they changed it back, for some reason it like never really connected. Yeah, it didn't in register. My brain. It didn't register until like this week when I was like, 
because I think someone asked me to like stack and I was like oh yeah but then I've got to wait until uh, for (laughs) an even minute and then I was like wait hang on a second no like that was like patched out like when was that patched out like it was a while ago now 707 I think they patched it out I want to say maybe 706 I'm pretty sure it's 707 so like a couple of months ago I guess because they put it in with 7.0 yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm not yeah. good at pa- patch memory. Some people are like, oh, yeah, you know, you know in 7.03a, they did X, Y, and Z. I don't have that memory, but I, I'm fairly certain that they added it in 7.0 and they took it away in 7.07. Yeah, and I've just forever been in that mindset of every even minute, which is... Not true, turns out. <laughs> not true at all. And, like, I knew that it changed, but, like, for, it just, like... I don't know. I just completely kind of forgot about it and was just continuing to do it every even minute, which was incredibly frustrating. And I was kind of like, how are people getting so many, like, as if I was playing in a game with another <laughs> support, I was like, how are, how are they getting so many, like, stacks? This doesn't make any sense. Like, why uh, why do I have so much difficulty? And then, yeah, this week Mystery I was solved. like, oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Do you have anything to add about roaming? I, th- I think that's all my questions. So... Um, I mean, roaming is very complicated in that it's very situational. So I think the general motto of find something you can do and do it is the most important thing that I would say for roamers is because everything changes based on the game, right? Like your mid lane, depending on the matchup, is going to have drastically different your roaming is going to have drastically different effects on the mid lane depending on the matchup. And within that matchup is going to depend how good your mid laner is. Like maybe your mid laner has a winning matchup but just sucks. Or like maybe they have a mm-hmm. winning matchup but they always use all their raises so they have no no mana to get kills. And then it's just like, well, like sure we could kill his DK but my mid laner has no mana ever. So when you get into like the nuts and bolts it gets complicated. And this is why roaming is hard. Roaming is all about finding what you can do assessing when you can do it and then getting it done and finding ways to get the next thing done so like if you say all right i know i can get their courier because they have a mid lane quap who is going to get a bottle at 220 i saw the courier go to her i'm arcing behind it now i can snipe the courier i've sniped the courier i've generated gold i know that the mid laner i know that the enemy off laner was is pushing so he has not gotten his bounty rune i'm gonna go get the bounty rune then I'll go check mine, and maybe I didn't get it. Sure, whatever. But I'll check. Bo- I'll check bottom rune, and then I'll deny the bottle. I deny the rune so that the enemy cannot bottle it. And then I'll get yeah. mid. Let's say like you can do that in a very like it's a natural flow of stuff. But it all started because you just said, "All right, I need to find an achievable goal." The achievable goal: sniping mm-hmm. the courier, execute it, okay. and then from there move to your next executable objective, and on and on and on. All right. Don't try to force okay. things, I suppose. Like, if your mid laner can't get kills, then, like, don't try to get kills there. Like, if like, it's just not going to happen. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, there's only so okay. much you can do. Yeah, that's true. And pick appropriate heroes. Or at least know what okay. hero you're playing. Don't treat a bounty hunter like a spirit breaker. And don't treat a spirit breaker like a bounty hunter. Like, they're very different heroes for good reason. Mm. So wise. <laughs> I, I wish I've been distracted because I have Ogre Magi. I have the Dota client right, right up right now, and we're talking oh, about okay. Ogre, so I had him pulled up. And he does thing yeah. where he scratches his belly and does and oh, yeah. makes this like belly scratching sound. And I didn't realize that I had my Dota sounds on because I so freely oh. them off. And I was like, "Why? Like, what is B Dub like scratching her chin? Does she have like a beard that I don't know about?" And I was I was trying oh, to ignore God. it, and I was like, "What is happening?" Like, I hope he who shall not be named can edit this out. And then I looked over and I was like, oh, oh I saw Ogre scratching his chel- his his uh, chest. And I was like, yep, no, never oh mind. Oh my god, that that's sense. so funny. I know, like, yeah, that, as if, yeah, as if you thought that sound was coming from me. That's so funny. Well, I thought like, maybe she's yeah, like just, scratching just a cat scratching or my, something. Just scratching my beard, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just blame that's everything funny. on cats with all the cat people I'm surrounded by. Somehow yeah. I've, I've lived this life. The universe is telling me to become a cat person. My cats are being very well behaved, actually. Like, actually, at some point in the... I don't know whether it, you heard it in the Patreon episode, um, but one of them actually just like jumped onto my keyboard and like walked across my laptop, and I was just like, "Oh God, like please don't do anything." <laughs> I don't remember that specific. I do remember no. it like knocking a whole bunch of things over during our meeting, and we just heard yes. it, like crash. And I was like, "Oh okay." <laughs> yeah, but you know, they're they're being all right. 
Okay. Um, so the next thing I would want to talk about quickly is, is jungle dead? I kind of feel like it is. Is it? Yeah. Jungling is okay. dead unless you're playing Chen or Enchantress. And most people at jungle are not good enough to be playing Chen and Enchantress. <laughs> no. Um, All right. Jungling is dead. That being said, you can still get away with it if you try to force it because pubs are ridiculous and like bad things win. You know, that's yeah, not that's rocket true. science. Everybody wins with five core team comps sometimes just because <laughs> that Dota is weird. But that's the saddest, isn't it? Like you you know, like there's a chance that they could win, but they really don't deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's then just they like, do win and then it's really sad. Yeah, it, it, you know, Dota is ridiculous. That's just how it is. Like, I just lost to a four four core team comp when I my team had a good team comp, but the enemy team yeah. they picked like they had a they had troll and anti mage and OD and Morphling. Oh well, that's greedy. But then they just dominated us because like Dota is nonsense and like who cares? Mm. So you yeah. can get away with jungling, but no, it is not good. Like. Okay. Unless you're playing a Chen or an Enchantress or like an Enigma, maybe you really like it's not good. Like they've nerfed, so so they buff jungle in that it spawns every minute, but they nerfed it in that you don't get much from individual creeps. So mm -hmm. jungling is only particularly efficient when you're taking stacks. That's why, and also they buff lane creeps. So lane creeps give a heck of a lot of gold. So. Yeah. Not only did they nerf what you get from jungle creeps, but they buffed the incentive you get for being in lane. So jungling is worse proportionally because you're getting so much less than lane. That's why, like, um, if you're playing anti mage, you are better off taking a uh, taking an extra wave and killing an extra wave yourself rather than taking three camps of creeps because those yeah. three camps of creeps are going to give you. You know, depending on the camps, I suppose, less XP and a little and less gold. So mm. you don't want to jungle because it's just you get less stuff. And also Iron Town's dead, so it's hard. Yeah. Um Yeah, like I don't really have I don't have any interest in playing jungle really, but I keep getting people playing jungle in my games. Um yeah. I played one and I can't remember who I was I was playing safely in core, um, I can't remember who I was playing. And it was kind of the last pick. Everyone was like, oh, last pick, can you pick a support? Because they uh, we already had one support, but they wanted to duel offlane. Um, and then the last person just went DK <laughs> in the jungle. And I was like, I can't remember who I was playing. I, it was someone who needed... It doesn't matter like, who you're playing. You lost that game. It doesn't matter. Game. Like, yeah, we lost it so hard. And then... They were really mad at everyone else. Like, oh, everyone's yeah. be, everyone's they such probably an idiot. started that game mad. Like, yeah, probably. And I'm yeah. just like, who, who, uh, why, why, yeah. Yeah, I aggro mean, duos I, are like the better jungle. Like, aggro duos, aggro duos frequently are what happens when somebody's mad that they can't play a core, so they just pick a core anyway. I'd rather have them play an aggro duo that's something weird like dk darkseer like sure that's terrible but it's going to be more effective and it's going to create issues for the enemy team whereas yeah. if they just play dk jungle like they're just a really bad dk like i'd rather like if you if you aggro duo with two cores or like some weird support core thing it throws a wrench in the whole game like, the enemy mm. team has something unexpected to deal with, and a lot of times they won't deal with it well. Uh, whereas if you jungle, you're just absent. Like, you are having literally no yeah. impact on the game and on the laning phase, which is the game. Yeah. Like, laning phase is the game for the first, you know, eight minutes or so. So, yeah, I would have rather than jungle, just do random be... crap in the off lane. Yeah. Like, just throw a wrench in the system or do random crap in the safe lane. Like, yeah, like I, lost... I would have preferred. Sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, like, I've lost to so many ridiculous things. Like, you like you lose to support invokers, and it's because they just, like, show <laughs> up, and they just do weird things. And you're like, oh, I didn't expect to be cold snapped here. And then you die, and then you're like, oh, God, like, I lost the oh, I lost the safe lane because, like, they have a doom and, and support invoker that roamed here and cold snapped me, and I constantly got stunned because of, uh, of the firewalking thing. Yeah. It's like, you don't expect that to happen. <laughs> like, that should never yeah. happen in a game of Dota 2, but it does. Because that guy threw a wrench in the whole system. So yeah. If you're gonna jungle, yeah, just go to the off lane and call it the jungle. I, I like I don't I don't know. Agro doers are so good. It's actually ridiculous. Yeah. I hate it. Like 
<laughs> I, I like they're just so good like they shouldn't be like theoretically they're always bad like theoretically i don't want them but then when i see them in games i'm like how how do i possibly beat this like marana morphling aggro duo like there's just no mm. way like i can't kill either of them sure like it shouldn't work but it does like he has waveform she has arrow she has one arrow they stun you and then they nuke you to death and suddenly they have two cores that are farming in the off lane while you have like yeah. two supports that are just feeding like yeah, it shouldn't work, but it does, like, because Dota's nonsense, so... Marana is such an irritating hero, actually. Like, I feel like I've played a, a lot against um, against her a lot recently, and, man, she's great. Like, she's just so good. She's... I like, Proud hates her, but I love Marana. And I actually, I think Marana offlane, I don't think it's good, but I think it is strong in lane. Because Leap means she's incredibly hard to kill, unless you absolutely stun yeah. lock her, which a lot of team comps are not able to do but then the thing about marana that makes her such a strong hero in just in general is that her animation is godly like her animation is so good her missile speed is so good that's another thing if you're memorizing with flash cards for dota stuff you need to memorize uh, missile speeds and attack mm -hmm. animations so good luck with that one um <laughs> that's a big part of mid laning but yeah marana's attack animation and her missile speed is so good that like how do you trade with this hero like every time you try to trade with her she hits you twice yeah. It's like playing against a Weaver with Shikuchi, except she's a Murana on a Tiger. Like, that's just not fair. So, yeah. Uh, like, once she has Phase yeah, Boots and, like, an Orb of Venom, like, what the heck do you do? Like She's real strong. Ugh. It's disgusting. Well, it seems, seems to me, anyway, like, she is. Um, but, yeah. yeah. It's just good crap okay. load of damage. God, I don't, I don't need, uh, like, she's a terrible offlaner from, like, the what offlaners are supposed to do perspective, but she's a great <laughs> offlaner in the sense that She's a great core. Yeah. All right. So, uh, should we do some listener questions? We should do some ads. I can't wait. I'm well, so yeah, excited before to hear you do that, the ads. I should do some ads. So, <laughs> our first sponsor is Pugna. That's P V G N A. And they're an online platform and community where high skilled Dota players and coaches create educational video guides on how to improve at the game learn new heroes, and help folks climb the ranks. The platform is ad-free, and each hero guide is divided into separate videos tackling specific concepts or hero mechanics. Each guide also has accompanying Dota client Steam guide to help you apply what you learned from your Pugna coaches. <laughs> this is so fun. I'm, I'm, I'm riveted. The, the, <laughs> so, again, like you, we were talking before the show, you've done, uh, you were exploring Pugna over like last week yeah. or so. Yes. So I was actually learning because I'm I'm playing I'm trying to play troll. I just think he's like a really interesting hero. Um, and I did I've started the troll warlord guide by Butcher, um, and it's really good. Like talking kind of like things I didn't really know about how the hero worked and how his skills work because like you can kind of read through them and play it, but still not quite understand the kind of nuances to the skills and stuff. Yeah. And it's it's just really helpful to see someone play it who knows what they're doing and actually talk through everything that they're doing. Yeah. Um, and kind of like item builds and tips and tricks and stuff like this. And he kind of goes through a safe lane gameplay analysis. Super, super helpful. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's just exciting to learn about a new hero that I haven't really dabbled in before so yeah it's fun i i like I, I like um i'm really bad at offlane like i'm just bad at offlane i i like i win <laughs> games because i'm good at certain offlane heroes but i'm bad at the process of being an offlaner is by far my worst role and so i've been watching jenkins's offlane guides um and mm. it's very helpful i still feed uh so i probably need to watch a few more <laughs> but yeah. it's very interesting because like you say like you get a lot of nuance and the cool thing about Pugna, because Pugna's content is fairly similar to ours. It's just like ours is a podcast and ours is from myself and Proud and you. Whereas Pugna has the advantage of it's just like a bunch of like pro ex pro players and really high tier pub players and stuff like that. So yeah. whereas like Proud and I each have specialist heroes where like Proud could talk about LD um, for, you know, 18 hours and I could talk about Invoke <laughs> for 18 hours. 
on Pugna because they have like nine nineteen thousand coaches or whatever. Uh, they that's an exaggeration. I don't know how many coaches they have, but they have a lot. Um, <laughs> they have they have enough that like every time I go on to like look for something new, there's like some random new person. And I'm like, oh okay, I guess this person's seven k, and I just never knew them. Um, they have a lot of things where it's like this guy just has a thousand games of Weaver, and I'm gonna watch his Weaver guide. Whereas yeah. if it's a platform like. Uh, this is going to sound like flame no matter what I do. But like, if you're watching Purge videos, Purge can be very educational. But if Purge makes a Weaver guide, Purge has not played a thousand Weaver guide Weaver games. He's played a hundred. So when you go to a platform like Pugna that has you know such a robust cater of coaches, you get that kind of personalized, not personalized, that kind of nuance to heroes yeah. because they have so many people that provo- that make content. Mm-hmm. which is uh, yeah. the point i think <laughs> oh, i was kind yeah. of beating like, around the bush <laughs> and like the thing i really like about it is how like the video topics are kind of split into shorter videos right yeah. so like the introduction is only about 12 minutes item builds is about 16 so you can kind of like watch one maybe go away come back like you don't have to watch one like massive video or like pause it and then remember where you got to like it's yeah. kind of like it's broken down into nice like digestible chunks so yeah and you can skip something that like yeah true um like some of the like i watched a night stalker guide and like i've I've played i don't know i've played maybe 30 games of night stalker 20 something Mm -hmm. and so i didn't watch the introduction like because i was like i know what Night Stalker does i know all his abilities but then so i saved like 12 minutes but then i jumped to the next part and like so if you are a person that like already knows a crap load about juggernaut but you will watch a juggernaut guide you could just like it's a two hour guide, but you could skip the first 45 minutes and then just jump right into like, hey, I'm going to watch this guy play Juggernaut and learn stuff. Yeah. So it's very like you can personalize it compared to, again, like if you're watching like an hour and a half long video from one person, it's like I don't know what starts where and what ends where and maybe it's just all a muddle of thoughts, like whatever. So yeah, it's a fun service. Yeah, we like it's good. A sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, there's plenty of content for players um, of all skill levels to learn from. So whether you're just learning the game, um, have already played for a long time, or just a veteran looking to brush up, there's plenty of you to learn from. So you can try out the full Pugna Pro Scription for 30 days, 100% free, with the promo code FOURTH. So that's F-O-U-R-T-H, not case sensitive. And you can find Pugna on Twitter, at Pugna, or pvgna.com are you excited next... for your first ad yeah i think that went okay except actually i realized when you said when there's a note in there saying it's not case sensitive um was that just a note to the reader ah, it's just a note in general it's important because okay. it's like some some <laughs> some uh some codes are case sensitive and some are not oh i see okay uh That's good. yeah all right so now i wondered whether now i just like <laughs> sorry, sorry, I wondered whether I just like read out like a like a note to whoever's actually reading it out, you know, like um Oh yes. Like a you know, like editor's when, note. Uh, in Anchorman where like he reads where he just reads the teleprompter and he's just literally like reading whatever yeah. is there. I felt like maybe I just had one of those moments, but okay. <laughs> No, you're safe. <laughs> okay, right. cool. Now now your expertise um, has been honed. How about the how about our second ad for today? Yeah, so our second sponsor is Unicorn. That's U N I K R N. And they're everyone's premier esports outlet. Unicorn has completely legal and free-to-play esports betting everywhere, as well as real money betting if you live in the UK or Australia. Maybe I should do some real money betting. Who knows? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, we've you been can, using it. Actually, maybe. <laughs> we've been doing I was going like, to say, don't you and, yeah, you and Proud do the things on uh, on Thursdays, haven't you, where you look at um, yeah. matches and stuff. We've and, had varied success, um, but it's yeah, fun. Yeah, maybe I should. Uh, so maybe i should add the extra pressure of you know i'll bet on whatever you guys decide yeah it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> like i thought we should get into like the legality of gambling in the u.s but at at times it feels ridiculous that you can't gamble and at times i'm like man it's a good thing i can't gamble because i, I i'm pretty sure the fanatic's gonna win tonight and like i don't know i could back a bet a few hundred dollars and it's like no sam you really shouldn't do that but um regardless i just bet unicorn silver which is just like fun money but i mean yeah. if you're smart about dota you know it's just like being smart about anything except you have better odds it's like if you're really smart about poker you're still kind of at the will of the deck as smart as you possibly can be like sometimes you just get like you know what's the worst hand you can get like a seven and a 
What is it? What's the worst hand you can get in poker? No, I, I don't know anything about poker. Isn't it like seven king not suited? That's like the worst thing? Like something? Sure. God, no, I can't remember. There's some like terrible hand. No it, it involves a seven. Um, okay. Seven, two. Seven and a two. And it not suited. Anyway, uh, yeah. I mean, you could say anything. I'd be like, oh, okay. Like, oh. I was hoping you were like a card shark, but uh, unfortunately. Yeah, no. I'm, That'd be fun. I'm pretty, it, just... I'm pretty decent at poker, but I. Oh, okay. that's just like through virtue of playing. I'm not smart about poker, if that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Anyway, so back, back to you. Back to the point. Uh, <laughs> you can earn betting tokens as well as unicorn gold to use on cosmetic item raffles just by playing your favorite games. In addition to esports betting, Unicorn has plenty of other stellar Dota 2 content, including articles, pro meta analysis, guides to new patches when they go live, and common esports. Interesting pieces from Interest folks pieces. like Gorgon. What, wait, what did I say? Interesting pieces? I mean, I suppose they oh, are interesting pieces. Well, I'm pieces. sure they are interesting pieces too. <laughs> they're, but... they're both. They're, they're multitasking. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Common esports interest pieces. I was, I was thinking about that because our, uh, I, our old... Uh, Ad read. We we would talk about uh, other. We weren't. Talk, we wouldn't talk about the other stuff, but they do like non Dota articles. Like they do a lot of CS:GO stuff, of course. But like Gorgon had an article go up about net neutrality as it relates to esports that I read. Oh, so, interesting. So like that's not a Dota article, but they have plenty of other you know random esports stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> so Unicorn also has their new Unicorn Connect service where you can earn Unicorn Gold just by playing Dota 2, CSGO or LOL and trade in gold for chances to win cosmetic items from those games at no cost to you. You can find Unicorn at unicorn.com for more info on Connect at unicorn.com forward slash connect. That's Unicorn, U-N-I-K-R-N and Connect, C-O-N-N-E. KT. Perfect. We're golden. There you go. <laughs> Man, now now we've gotten Look two different accents to read the uh the the uh sponsor prompts. It's oh, fun. Yeah. You get all all the variation like premiere becomes however you say it. Premiere. Prem, prem, how do you say premiere? Premiere. It, it does. I said prem, premiere. Okay, maybe maybe it's a different word that I noticed. I feel like you said premiere different. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But that, but that is different, right? I mean, it you is different, but premier, it's not that different. And I say premier. 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 I don't know. Whatever. I'm thinking too hard about this, <laughs> but uh, it's fun. I like I like seeing people do the ads because, <laughs> I, I mean, I like not being the host, I should say. I'm like, I'm beaming. I'm, I'm just like. Are you actually? It's, it's just fun to That's like. That's so funny. Like I wrote these things and you had to read them and, and like, oh God, it's just so fun. Um, anyway. Yeah, I was actually thinking like I should. That should not have been like the first time I was actually reading them through. <laughs> I realized like I have not read these, so I, that was just me just trying to read them for the first time. That's all right. Um, it came out great. I did much worse okay. my first time. So everybody, that's that's how <laughs> that's how the ads work. Uh, it's very fun. We enjoy them and we enjoy the services that we get to work yeah. with. So yeah, so listener questions. On to our questions. Yeah. So you get to pick them. <laughs> you get all the host duties. Okay, so, I mean, if you don't want to answer one of these, just let me know and we can save it for proud, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, some of them are very proud-centric. Like, that's, that's what I mean, like, not ones that you don't want to answer, as in, like, if they're more proud-centric. Um, <laughs> not I, like, you I, I know, we'll leave them. all the... I'll, I'll, yeah? Let's see, I'll choose one and Because, I mean, I'm not going to be answering them, am I, so... <laughs> um, let's see. You Just read Kruger's, screw it. Oh, let's not think yeah, too hard, sure. just, just read Okay. This. So Krieger has uh, two questions. So the first one is, he says, So I'm curious about the distinction between Blink and Force Staff specifically. Some swear to one or the other, and others vary what they get based what what they get based on whether or not they need int or whatever. I know Proud says by Blink, it's just kind of what he does, I guess. But if you had to be super objective about it, what do you have to say on that? It's a very good question. So... This is yes. especially like I mean you and I play a lot of support. This is mm -hmm. I would say very often a support question compared to a core question. They're very they're very few cores that make hard decisions between blink and force, but there are basically every support makes this decision. Um as cores, you have so much money, right? You're just like, hey, I'm just gonna buy a blink or hey, I'm just gonna buy yeah. a force staff, right? Um and and some heroes get both. Like there's really no issue on cores. In mm -hmm. my opinion, 
if you're playing a support, I you I pref I'm a blink player. Similar to Proud, like I well actually Proud's probably Proud likes both, but Proud is a very good four staff player. Like he's very good at using the item in, in interesting ways that some people might not think about. And but I am most definitely a blink player. Like blink is my most bought item that is not a boot item. Uh, for by like a good margin, actually not a good margin. Mm -hmm. Aghanim Scepter is almost tied, but still, it's I, I'm I build a lot of blink daggers, so I find a lot of nuance and a lot of ways to work around it. And I'm that like annoying person that when I'm watching a game or when I'm watching a teammate or doing coaching and watching a replay, I'm like, oh man, your blink was off cooldown for like a half a second there, like you could have blinked. And they're like, oh, I didn't think about that, or like they or they yeah. just don't use it. I'm that annoying person that's like blink, 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 <laughs> in a very literal sense. Like, I, I uh, if I'm watching somebody die, I will just say blink, 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 blink until they blink. Yeah. Uh, which is very annoying, which is why nobody should pub with me. Anyway, um, <laughs> I think there is a, a large amount of personal preference where some people are very good at force and some people are very good at blink. That being said, situationally, one is better than the other. So uh, situations where force is the clear winner are when you are going to have your blink disabled. So let's say you're playing against a Tinker and a Night Stalker. And the Night Stalker has Aghanim Scepter, which means you're going to be constantly taking Tinker Rockets, which means your Blink is going to be useless um, in the nighttime, at least, which is all the time because you're playing against a Night Stalker. So in that situation, your Blink Dagger is not super good. Like, sure, maybe you smoke and then you, like, wait back and then you Blink later and, you know, whatever. It's still good. But in that situation, four Staff is going to be better because it's guaranteed mobility at some point um, in the fight. The other big thing, or similarly, like, uh, I don't know, what's a good example? If they have a team that jumps on you, your blink is not super useful. Like, if you're playing a Wind Ranger and you are the primary damage dealer when you're pushing, you blinking is not going to be particularly important if the enemy Magnus blink RPs you, unless you have godly reaction times and blink away while he's in the RP animation. So, with all that being said, I would build four staff in those situations where I either am going to have a inactive blink or blink is just not as good. The other big reason why I would build four staff is against AOE control abilities that I'm particularly worried about. Mm. So if I'm playing um if I'm playing a hero and I'm deciding between blink and force and the enemy team has probably the best example is a clockwork they have a clockwork. I'm not going to be able to blink because he's going to be A, deactivating it with his rocket flares, right? And B, he's going to be jumping on me with, with a hook and then cogs. So I want to have a four staff yeah. to get out of the cogs. Perfect. Like that's the best example of a situation where you say, all right, I'm playing Wyvern. I would like to have blink, but instead I'm going to build a force because they have cogs. Similarly, like if they have a pit lord uh, or underlord, as he's called now. If they have Underlord, you are worried about this AoE control ability and you want to be able to force out of it. Uh, so a force staff is going to be better than a blink because a blink, you can't blink when you're ensnared, but you can force while you're ensnared. Or like a Naga. Mm -hmm. If you're Naga netted, you can't blink, but you can force. Um, and there are other smaller examples like um, if I'm against a Disruptor and he tries to kinetic field me, I can blink away. But if the kinetic field is already active, I cannot force staff out of it. Although, of course, I could force staff while it is being created. But let's say it's on cooldown, you know, whatever. Oh, interesting. Or like, uh, yeah. if they have a Skyrath Mage mid, and he rush, he rushed a Kaya and then an Atos. If he Atoses me, I can't blink away from that, so I'm just gonna die unless I have a BKB. Mm. But I can force staff away from that, and then I'll probably still die because he saw me force staff and he has a long range. But still, you're a little bit better off. So, mm. yeah, that's kind of the actual reasoning if you're talking objectively about, like, how to decide between a blink and a force. But a lot of it does come down to personal preference. Force staff is more okay. of a team-oriented item as well because, obviously, you can use it on your teammates, whereas blink is a much more singular, I'm going to make big plays or I'm going to, you know, do whatever item. Yeah, I think that's a good way of looking at it. Like, I the the kind of... The toss-up I have between Blink and Force Staff as a support is whether I can actually gather up enough money to afford a Blink Dagger. I think that's maybe the most yeah, common issue I cool. have trying to get Blink. If I if we're having a tough game and like I keep kind of dying and stuff, then I will probably just get a Force Staff. Like that's yeah. probably not the way you should do it, though. No, no, that's actually least, a like, really good point. Staff, 
Oh, okay. I, so I, I forgot about like, that. At least with the full stop, you can like split up the items, right? So you can, it's not just you're saving up for like one big item. You can kind of. Yeah, you can buy it piecemeal. Work towards it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. that, that's a really good point as well. Like if you, in a lot of games, you're just realistically not going to get 2250. Like 2250 is a lot of gold to hold on to, especially considering if you're a support, you're buying support items. But yeah. like getting a thousand gold, that's like, you know, you have a couple good pushes or like a couple good team fights. You get a you get a grand pretty handily. Um, and also like in the late game, it's easier to get gold. So if you are building both, sometimes it's going to say, all right, I can. I it, four staff is a very achievable goal. And then blink dagger is kind of like a, a pie in the sky goal. And sometimes mm. you can get to that blink dagger if you just have like a good series of events. Like, let's say you're playing Lich. Yeah and you win a fight, and somehow everybody on your team dies, and you get all the kills and all the money, then oh, right, suddenly yeah. you're super poor, but now you're not. Like, now you're rolling in it. You have 3,000 gold. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, God has just bestowed upon you a blink dagger. <laughs> Whereas, sure, you were poor before, and you would have built a four staff, but now, you know, you know, go go for it. Build a blink dagger. Yeah. Okay. So his second question is... Regarding playing seemingly random strength heroes as support, like Centaur, Axe, etc., just because he has a stun and is tanky, or because blank. Guess I'm looking for examples on when you would pick something like Undying 5, which currently makes no sense to me. Doesn't have to be Undying. Um, if it's been trodden too much, but similar heroes that generally make no sense to support on. Yeah, so... This is like, uh, I was thinking about doing actually a segment on this for Theorcraft Thursday. Oh, yeah. There's something that is very strong about picking tanky heroes. It's mm. kind of like picking stuns, right? If you're hard to kill, that's good because you're going to get stuff out. Even if that stuff's not ideal, you're hard to kill, and that's good. That creates issues. Um, like in Undying 5, right? Um, Undying 5 or 4, as he's commonly played creates an issue because he is hard to kill and he and he's healing people and he's decaying you and he has another he has a tombstone so not only is he tanky and hard to kill but you have a tombstone which demands attention so this hero yeah is a five that has created all these problems whereas if you have a five cm they you know you you just get jumped on and die the problem runs into the problem you run into later on is that if you run a undying five let's say to continue with this example or an undying four for that matter if you have if you end up being very easily killed then all of your or not all of it but a lot of your advantages are now nullified if that makes sense right yeah where you pick this hero to be tanky and annoying and suddenly you are not therefore you're losing out on a whole bunch of your advantages it'd be like picking a ranged hero and ending up as melee like mm -hmm. your advantage is that from the get-go of the game you are meant to be a ranged hero but suddenly you're a melee hero, like that's that's not good. Um, yeah. Same the same thing with Undying. Like you pick this hero with the intention of being tanky and creating problems. If you suddenly have like a couple bad fights and become easily killed by the enemy Zeus who has a refresher orb, then like who cares? Like you should have built a hood. Like you're just not an Undying anymore. When it comes to picking random heroes, uh, like uh, Kruger said. Kruger said, uh, seemingly random heroes such as, like, Ent uh, like Centaur or Axe, I think that kind of falls under a similar methodology of what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about aggro duos and not jungling, is I think yeah. there is a big advantage, especially, and I hate saying this because it sounds patronizing, but especially in lower MR pubs where you can get away with some weirder things. But again, like, I just lost to a four four core team comp in, like, a 5k pub. So, like, again, this stuff is nonsense everywhere. Um... <laughs> There is a big advantage to just creating a problem somewhere and forcing the enemy team to deal with it, and they've probably not seen it before. So if you're running, like, a DK and a Ogre Magi in the offlane, and, like, both are farming somehow, it's like, all right, like, sure, theoretically, this is not good. Like, you're not going to see it in pro games. But in actuality, you're playing a safe lane tri lane that's, like, AA, Rubik, Luna. It's like, okay, well, our combo is not going to kill Ogre, and our combo is not going to kill, kill DK, and both of them are running at us, and both of them are spamming abilities, and both of them have crazy HP regen and a bunch of armor. Like, we can't zone these people. They're getting a lot of XP. We can't pull because they'll push our tower in. And 
this is just like two random heroes. Like it doesn't even need to be ogre and DK. Like it could be any two tanky heroes. Like centaur clockwork. You're running centaur clockwork, and like you get slightly out of position as a support. Centaur stomps you. Clockwork runs up on you, has battery assault, and then he brings you in with cogs, and suddenly you're dead. And like you can't zone those two. Like clockwork has what like 600 HP at level one. And Centaur has, like, 800 HP at level 1. I think Clockwork has more, mm. like, eight 700. Anyway, like, just picking two tanky heroes as supports is just incredibly annoying. Or this same, it's a similar methodology when you pick uh, evasive heroes as, as supports. Is, like, I lost to an AM support the other day. Again, I'm on, like, a 19,000 game losing oh. streak. So I've lost <laughs> to basically every hero in every position. But... Oh. When, you lose, when you play against an AM support, you're like, ha, this is terrible. Like, there's no way this is good. But then... You can't kill him because he has a blink and he has phase boots and an orb of venom and like a medallion. And you're like, all right, he just blinks in, hits me a bunch of times. I can't trade with him because I have no mana. And if it doesn't go well, he just leaves. Like, why, 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 how do you play against that? Like, sure, theoretically, it's terrible. And in actuality, it's terrible. But in the moment, it throws a wrench in this whole game and it puts everybody in this weird state of not knowing. And Dota is profoundly mm. a game about knowing right like it's a game about <laughs> knowing i'm gonna play this mid matchup this way because i know i deal more damage than them and i'm gonna go these items because they have these heroes which means i'm gonna need a bkb which means i'm gonna skip my s and y and just go shadow blade bkb and you make all these decisions because you have all these known factors so when you get in these games and the enemy team has four cores or like weird supports or weird picks and that throws a whole wrench in the system you're playing shadow fiend and you're like all right I thought I was going to go Shadowblade BKB, but if I go BKB, they have like a support anti mage that's going to still like bother me and stun me because uh, this mini stun pierces BKB from his ult. Like, what? Like, I'm just in this weird position where my whole game is just thrown off kilter because they have some bizarre pick, and um, there's a lot of merit to that. And again, like theoretically, mm -hmm. a lot of things are bad, but in practice, you just win games of Dota two, like. That. Yeah. it it sounds bizarre but it does work and the heroes that these things work with are heroes that are at a base level strong and need one item that's kind of the general theme i would yeah. emphasize right like okay yeah like if you ran like a support timber saw that would not be good because he's very greedy he needs a couple items and he needs big items and he needs a lot of xp but if you run a support centaur, like from level one, he's tanky and he does good base damage and he is and he has useful abilities. He either has return, which makes him impossible to zone uh, or impossible is a very exaggeration. It makes him hard to zone and makes him deal a lot of damage or he has stomp, which is a stun and stuns are great. So there's merit to, to these picks and it sounds weird and it is weird, but it can work. Everything can work. Tanky heroes are that's good. That's why we... That's why we love this game so much, right? Yeah, Anything well, and everything love is work. a well, overstatement. Actually, well, I was going to say, like, I was gonna say I, that's why it's interesting. Yeah. That's not why we love it, because... It's interesting to the people winning. Weird support. Yeah, that's true. It, yeah, it must be really fun for them. And it's so <laughs> satisfying to win on, like, crazy things that you don't think should win. Like, when I play Armlet Rubik, like, you don't think I should win on Armlet Rubik. What? But, oh, I, I've won a lot of games of Armlet Rubik. Like, I, no or like when I played Bloodstone AA uh, yesterday and won, like, that's a ridiculous build, oh, yeah. but it was really good in that game, and we won while I was getting it, but if I had that item, I would have propelled me even better, because there is logic behind it. Some of the stuff we talked about with, like, the picking weird out of weird non-support supports that are strength, it still, it applies similarly to, like, making a weird picks up, pickup of items. Like, I lost, mm -hmm. I played a Juggernaut game, and I basically lost single-handedly because the co-op built a shadow blade and i did not expect it and then i died while i was farming the offlane uh and then they pushed and took a rax because i yeah. i didn't think the freaking quap was gonna have a shadow blade like what like that that's not expected because like i had no. vision the rune so i knew she didn't have an invis rune and suddenly she's just on top of me with a shadow blade and i die because she has shadow blade orchid like you don't expect to die to that like those kind of mm -hmm. weird things that throw a wrench in the system are very effective yeah. All right. You want to move to the next question? Right. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I'll pick the next one. Do you one. see any questions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Um, 
There's a couple that are definitely proud questions. One of them as a teaser. I feel like I got to tease questions for next week just so they get answered by <laughs> proud. Why is CM bad from Alex Rogers from oh, YouTube? Yeah. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get the full explanation on why CM is actually bad from proud. Because it's going to be, it's going to be yeah, a fun, be fun 15 minutes. I actually kind of like CM. So do I. But I also kind of agree that I don't, I don't think she's particularly good. Um, I mean, yeah. I don't think she's true. that bad though. I'll be honest. But. Um she wins team fights yeah. uh, at my kind of level anyway. Oh, she, she, probably, she wins team, team fights kinda, always. Okay. Well, that, that's a lie. She wins team fights at any MMR is probably a better, more accurate statement. Um, let's say new guy. New guy sent in a bunch of questions, so we're going to do, let's just do a couple. Um, yeah. First question, when should I start placing uncommon wards? Should I do that to start with? So uncommon warding is always good but is more necessary later and also is more necessary the higher mmr you go um which again i i don't like saying that but it is true um uncommon warding i guess to to kind of flesh out what an uncommon ward spot would be and then we're gonna get into the complicated stuff of trying to describe the map um (laughs) if i'm placing an uncommon ward I guess, I guess we should define what a common word is. So a common word would be like, um, would be, sorry, I'm loading into a game. That's why I'm kind of like stuttering. Um, a common word would be a word that's on one of the eyes, right? Like, yeah, that's just a, for obvious reasons, that's a common word. An uncommon word would be, let's say, okay, so if we're looking at bottom rune, my one of my favorite uncommon word spots is there's two little trees that are right on radiant side um, by the bottom rune. You could place a ward behind those two trees, and it will see the rune still, and it will see a large part of the dire side, and then it'll also see a good part of the radiant side moving towards the rune um, on the low ground, mm-hmm. like below the ancients. I really like that spot because it is an uncommon ward that gives common vision. So common vision Mm -hmm. is what I consider places that you want to have vision of that are commonly warded. So like bottom rune, using that as the continued example, the common ward spots would be on the spire by the dire bounty rune or on the two little uh, high ground places by the radiant side. So if I'm dire and I know the enemy team has vision of my of the bottom rune, my assumption is going to be that they have it on one of those two uphill parts that are by like yeah. the stairs going towards the shrine. So yeah. I place my sentry ward in between the two of them. And then I'm surprised when I don't ward and I say, oh, you know, I guess those de- those wards expired. Or maybe I was just thinking about it. Maybe they have a ward on the other side. So then maybe I place a sentry on the dire side and then it turns out they didn't ward there. That place that I was talking about in between those two trees is also a obscured by the trees, so it's actually a little harder to see, even if they do put a sentry. That being said, that you know, that's like a fringe benefit that probably won't last, but it might save you, you know, mm-hmm. one out of ten times that it might get dewarded. But that spot avoids the sentry ward placement that gets the two high ground common places. So it's if the enemy team is trying to deward me, I am making it much more difficult for them. Um, and even if they do deward me, uh, the odds are they're going to have to spend two sentries instead of one. Whereas if I ward the generic common spots, that one sentry ward is going to get both of them. Um, yeah. Another good example of this would be if I'm Radiant Team warding Dire Jungle, when you're pushing aggressively, a lot of times you'll ward the, the Eye Spire close to Tier 2 Dire, tier two dire Top. Mm-hmm. That place is super dewardable but if you want to get comparable vision that is not going to get dewarded as as often an uncommon ward spot would be in between the medium camp and the large camp um closer to where the shrine used to be you know that big piece piece of Mm -hmm. flat land uh where the ancients are if you ward the little spot um in between those two camps uh, that's a really good place because it gives you vision of a full camp that is commonly farmed and a camp where people feel safe. And it gives you vision of par- a partial vision of the open space, especially if it's daytime, of the open space near the ancients. So it shows you a lot of the farming rotations and it shows you in a way in and a way out that the enemy team is going to be commonly using. 
Um, mm. And there's lots of little spots like these. The kind of point of uncommon warding is that you are accepting that you're not going to get optimal vision at the price of not getting dewarded. I would say, in general, I place a lot of common wards. As much as I love uncommon wards, I place a lot of common wards if I have identified that the enemy team is not dewarding or if it's a common ward that I need immediately. So um, yeah. a, a good, another good example would be Dire Tier 1 Offlane. There's that Spire by the Secret Shop. That is a super dewarded spot. That being said, if I know I'm about to push that tower, I'm going to ward that spot because I'm going to immediately have dividends. Whether they deward it or not, it's going to show me exactly my ability to push that tower. So I'm basically investing 80 gold and one ward cooldown so that I'm able to push that tower, which is going to net my team you know, hundreds of gold and, and a lot of map control. So that is a common ward spot that even if it gets dewarded, I'm not too worried about. Uh, I'm not too worried about. Whereas an uncommon mm. ward would be like, let's say, putting it in the space between the tier 1 and the tier 2. And sure, that's going to give me good vision, and it's not going to get dewarded, but the vision is not going to be nearly as good, and it leaves me open to getting ganked from the west. So yeah. the cost is that your vision is not as good, but the benefit is that you are not going to be dewarded. That war is going to sit there for another five and a half minutes, even after I've taken that tower. And it's mm-hmm. going to give me still more vision, and that's going to be good. So you just have to do that kind of cost-benefit analysis of saying, all right, like, can I afford to not have optimal vision, or do I need to have optimal vision? If you need to have optimal vision, you either need to be aware, be assured that they are not dewarding, or you need to be aware that they are, that if they do deward, you're still going to be able to accomplish your objective. And sometimes you just gamble also. Like, yeah. It seems like a little oversimplified. Sometimes you're just like, yeah, maybe they'll deward it, whatever. <laughs> like if you have four wards on you, you're like, yeah, sure, let's just throw it out there. That's kind of yeah. that's how I think about it. Is yeah, hopefully, hopefully that was enough. I don't want to like reiterate the reiterate way too much. No, yeah, no, I think I think that makes a lot of sense. It, I think that makes a lot of sense. I feel like everybody has their own ward spots that they favor, also. So it's important to do weird wards and figure out what you like. Uh, like one of my favorite things to do in test lobbies is just to place wards and see what kind of vision I get. And mm. nowadays you don't have to do that so much because it shows you like the if you hold alt it, or I mean if you hold the ward out it shows you where like what yeah, vision you like, get. Yeah, it's like kind of like blue kind of yeah. circly thing. But it is like you'll you'll be interested to find the weird spots that you can ward that gives you give you awesome vision. Um Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's a trade-off, and you just got to figure out whether or not you can afford that trade-off. Let's mm-hmm. see. New guy's next question. He said, let's see, this one's a pretty simple one. What constitutes a good BKB usage? B-Dub, I'm sure you, uh, you and I, are you a good BKB player? I feel like there are good BKB players and there are bad BKB players. And um, I don't think I'd call myself a good BKB player. I've been improving, but I'm too greedy. I would say... I'm not a good BKB player. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, I'm just thinking about some... I had a couple of troll games today, and I wasted my BKB a couple of times just because I thought that, like, the enemy team were going to push up onto high, our high ground, and then I used it, and then I wasted it, and then they were like, oh, well, trolls used the BKB, so now we can yeah push up. So- I do that a lot. Like, I kind of get scared and then use it and then i'm like oh yeah i should not have used it now yeah so to find out what constitutes a good bkb usage let's talk about what bad bkb usages are so b you gave the probably the simplest example that i also i feel like i'm too conservative with my bkb i wait for the absolute perfect moment and a lot of times that means i die before getting to use it because i'll just get stunned. oh i see but a bad bkb usage is one where you're not dodging spells like to to boil this down as simply as possible, if you use a BKB and then there's no spells like that you're concerned about, that's a bad usage. So mm-hmm. um, a good BKB usage is one where the enemy wants to disable you, they want to damage you, they want to do whatever spells you bought that BKB to dodge. They want to do those things to you at this given time, and they cannot. 
that is the ideal BKB time. So, for example, right, a perfect BKB usage would be like you're playing against a Skywrath and a Tide Hunter, and the Skywrath silences you and starts his combo. He throws his ult down, and you ult and, and you BKB as the Tide Hunter is blinking and ravaging. That's mm-hmm. the perfect BKB usage, right? Because you yeah. have executed, you've used your BKB and nullified all of the things you wanted to nullify. In that situation, if you held your BKB, like some of some of our hosts might do, myself mostly, um, if you hold your BKB and then you get hit by both those things and then you use your BKB after, you're wasting it because you've already been hit by the stuff that you meant to dodge. So that's like yeah. a really simple way, I think, of describing what a good BKB usage is. It's just finding what you want to dodge and dodging it effectively. Um, yeah. And also, and I think, yeah, sorry, can you continue? No, I was going to say, I think the, um, the worst BKB, uh, usage, which I have done a couple of times is forgetting that you have it. (laughs) Yeah. Or using it and immediately dying. (laughs) Well, that, yeah. (laughs) I think, um, one of the other things that I find, there's some interesting nuance to BKB in that since the charges change over time, right, they go from 10 to five, the five second BKB charges, you don't have to be as careful with. Um, because I feel like the five second BKB charges are a lot harder to use, but also a lot simpler to use, if that makes sense. Because the 10 second BKB charges, like when I'm using my 10 second and nine second BKB charges, I need to win these fights. Like those are huge commitments. Whereas when you use a five second BKB, you are probably late enough in the game that you know exactly what you need to dodge and you know how you want to, how you want to use it. So you could just pop it and just throw it out there. And it's only five seconds. Mm. Whereas that 10 second BKB charge, if you waste your 10 second BKB, that's a terrible feeling. Like you use a 10 second BKB and then like you get, inf- and then you get like ulted by a Bane. It's like, oh, like, okay, like oh, why did I buy this item? Like I just spent five minutes farming a BKB only for me to get Bane ulted and now it's worthless. So mm. those first few BKB charges, I think you need to be using much more decisively and you need to uh, arrange around them and say, all right, I just got a BKB, let's push. Because that's when you're at your height of its... its, it's that's when your BKB is at, is at its height of usefulness. Interesting. So, yeah, I did not realize that the duration went down. B-dub, B-dub. I know. B-dub. I know. I know. You... Like... This is actually, like... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so certain that you're, like, lying to me right now. No, I'm really not. I'm, I'm like, I just, like, as you were talking about it, I was like, what? And I just looked up the item and yeah. Damn. It does do um, that. You're right. You're right. It does do that. You're right. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, that explains a lot. But now I feel like, what, did I just not read that? Or did I just read it and then just like, just completely ignore it you must like, add like a lot of what, what's the word for when you like uh ignore things like cognitive dissonance is that what, is that what it is <laughs> like where you because like people say this constantly they're like oh he has a 10 second bkb oh he has an eight second like his bkb is yeah. down five like let's fight i think like i've just just kind of ignored like selective it. hearing think, yeah maybe um damn yeah like, and you cannot wow, rebuy them that's that's a uh I'm embarrassed. I can't believe I didn't know that. It's okay, as long as you admit it. I hope someone else. I yeah. I hope someone else out there is like, oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah, and well, so here's the other thing. <laughs> please, yeah, if you're listening to this and you didn't know that, please let me know. <laughs> it, it's tied to Am your hero. So <laughs> actually, yeah. you cannot buy a new BKB and then have a 10 second BKB again, whereas you used to be able to, like back in the day. But a f- couple of years ago, I want to say they changed it. Because you used to be like, all right, I use my 10 second BKB, and then I use it down to five, but now I'm really rich playing like, you know, whatever, I'm playing Sven. Then you buy a new BKB and they would start at 10, 10 seconds, but that's not the case anymore. Oh, I see. Because um, that's kind of natural thought that many people would yeah. think and used to be true, but is no longer true. Um, how long has this is show so gone? It's gone quite long. I don't think we should do any more questions. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It has gone long. Yeah. We can, Whoops. I, I talked a bit too much, which is what I said I wasn't going to do, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, so, B-Dub, close <laughs> us out. I'm excited All right. for somebody else to do the plugs. This is this is just like it's yeah. a field day. Um, yeah. So, 
I was, oh, do, wait, do you want to talk about Patreon for a bit? Oh, yeah, so... For a second? We, uh, I know you wanted, so whilst whilst plugging Patreon, go to patreon.com for slash full sprint. Yeah, so we broke... Help us out. Yeah, we uh, we broke our 550 goal as of today by $1. We're at 551, which means Proud and I will be doing a once monthly, so long as we maintain our 550, a once monthly video series uh, playing Dark Souls because Proud has played Dark Souls like 8 million times and uh, knows all the obscure lore and has played all the weird variants and is super into it and um, I have never touched the game and I've actively avoided the game because I knew that this would be a fun series to do at some point for content so because like it's been on sale before I'm like oh man I should probably finally play Dark Souls but with the uh with the idea that because we've had this idea for like two years i want to say at this point and we just never did it oh, really? um we're gonna start coming. doing that so we'll do like one episode it's it'll be available for all patrons um for at least i think we're i think we committed to let's see at least two hours of gameplay and if we don't beat a major boss within those two hours we'll keep playing until we beat said major boss so Mm. we like if we beat one major boss at like an hour then we'll play until the next major boss is dead and like maybe that takes two and a half hours and it takes two hours 45 minutes or whatever basically the fun of this is gonna be proud just like backseat gaming me and yelling at me the whole time because i'm not good at games it turns out i'm good at dota that sounds really fun but i'm i'm excited for this i have committed so much time and effort into dota that i've gotten so much worse at other games it's actually kind of (laughs) ridiculous because when i was younger i would like play a variety of games and like try to get good at all of them and i was a kid so like i had way more time yeah and i was a delinquent who like didn't do well in school and stuff which also helped me (laughs) do well there are lots of kids that are super busy because they like they like are good kids but I was just like, nah, whatever. I'll, I don't, I don't do homework. But uh, yeah, as a kid, I was like, oh, I'm good at like all the games I played. But now, as an adult, I'm like, I'm good at Dota, and that's it. Like, I, I'm terrible at everything else. So proud being very, very good at Dark Souls and very knowledgeable is just gonna beat it into me as I just like disappoint him repeatedly and die. So yeah, yeah, I'm very. I'm very excited to watch this. I've actually, I've ne- never played Dark Souls either. So like, I am excited to yeah. I haven't watch even watched people play it. Because again, I've been avoiding no. it. I've been, I've been avoiding yeah. it actively just for this. Like one of the Let's Play YouTube channels that I like, they did a fun Dark Souls playthrough and I was like, I can't watch this because it'll spoil me. I don't even know what the story uh, of Dark Souls is. Like I, I'm, I'm, uh, I have my Dark Souls chastity still. Um <laughs> Yeah, so that'll be a lot of fun. We, we, we're we excited yeah. to reach that goal. We were going to do it anyway. We were at like 542, and we're like, we should just do this for December because it's fun. So we're going to be recording that this weekend, I think, on Saturday the 23rd because we don't do holidays, uh, Proud and I. So um, yeah. it should be fun. Um, yeah. I, I think we might stream it. It depends how easy it is to stream um, can, with like in conjunction with recording and whatnot because um, mm. I haven't set it up yet, but we'll see. Almost nobody watches streams anyway because like it's going to be the holiday weekend, so I'm not too worried about the stream, but it'll be a video at the very least and it'll be available on our Patreon for everybody that is, you know, you could be a $1 patron and you can have all this fun stuff. And there's patron exclusive yeah. shows and whatnot, uh, you know. Patreon's dope. And you get the patron gold color in discord.gg slash fourth, which is where you can interact with all of us and send us questions yeah. and do everything else. I don't know. You could you could do whatever you want. You could just, I mean, you can't do whatever you want, uh, but you can do basically anything as long as you don't like <laughs> yell racial slurs. So, um, oh, yeah, then you'll get yeah, banned. Yeah, probably don't do that. Uh, that's the one thing that you can't do. Other than that, though, <laughs> um, you can come and like talk about Star Wars or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what people do Harry in Discord. Potter. Harry Potter. Oh my god! Everybody talks about Harry Potter these days. <laughs> it's, it's scary. We have a, we have what's what's the channel got renamed to? Um, we have a, a pets channel. Um, oh, familiars. Familiars. Yeah, familiars. That's what it started as. I thought people were talking about changing it, but yeah, Discord's where it's at. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can you can join Discord at discord.gg forward slash fourth if you're not already part of the chat. Um, of our discord server come and come and be a part of that fun um you can also follow us on twitter at fourth spirit that's spelt out not the number four 
And then you can follow Ursi on Twitter at Ursinity. And I am at A Up B Dub. A Y U P B E E D U B. I'm actually thinking about changing that. It is a mouthful. Like, it doesn't really roll off the tongue very well, does it? Um, but... it it's all right. It could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, and you can also oh, check man. out our YouTube channel. B dub. You know what message I just got? I was checking my Discord. I got what? a DM. So uh, somebody that I talk to regularly said, "Nice to see you. I haven't lost all hope in Dota. I've had a miserable f- few days myself. I think I lost twelve out of fifteen games." <laughs> and then this podcast oh. is gonna come out where I'm like, "Yeah, I've lost nine out of my last ten. Oh yeah. boy. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, no. Dota. What a hard game." It's so tough. I think I learned something on this podcast from myself, so maybe I'll get better. That's the dream. <laughs> Watch some Pugna videos. Um, yeah. Was that all the plugs? Did I do them all? I think so. Am I missing something? I kind of did the list backwards, and now I'm kind of confused as to what I've done and Twitter, what I haven't. Twitter, Patreon, um, Discord. YouTube. YouTube. Tell a friend about the show. Tell a friend. Leave a, iTunes review, reviews. Leave a review on iTunes. Oh, send us questions. Send us questions. We actually have send a lot of questions. questions right now. But we actually do. Still send us questions. We actually don't have that many. Send us questions anyway. Um, we have enough that we won't and, starve over winter break. But yeah, true. eventually we will need more questions. So please give them to and, us. Even yeah, quick I think ones. that's it. We can do like lightning rounds. That's what I was talking about with somebody... Uh, so that sent us a bunch of questions. I was like, we might just lightning round a bunch. So like, if you have simple questions, just like let us know you want the like. I mean, we can tell if they're simple questions. Maybe we'll just do one where like either Proud or I'll just like do eight questions all in a row, something like that. Oh, that'd be fun. Anyway, that that's that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's a. Uh, do you have a closing for the show? My first, Put you on the spot. No, I mean, I know, I know you have a line which is learning about dota and learning about ourselves and <laughs> you make it sound so bad I can't <laughs> no no i mean it was really it's really good but i can't remember what it is it's i usually don't remember what it uh, is until i'm in it i wait what is it so it's i think it's like i hope you've learned a little bit about dota a little bit about each other and a little bit about ourselves sure that's good enough is that it I, that sounds sure, good to me i mean we're gonna go with that perfect goodbye everybody <laughs> all right bye